Did you ever stop to think about how you got here? I mean, this video, not in life. To answer that would take a lot more time than what we have today, but how did you get here? Well, you typed into your app or your web browser and you got here and then when you found the video, you clicked on it. What you may not know is that there's dozens or hundreds of different pieces of technology that all work together in microseconds to get you right here so you could watch this video. And you didn't have to figure it out or even know that it was all there. It just works. So if you want to be able to do stuff like this for your company and your customers, and come with us as we take a look today at Azure Front Door. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. The Azure Front Door service is designed to implement scalable and secure entry points for fast delivery of your global applications. Front Door is a part of a family of technologies around Azure networking, and that breaks down into these four areas, connectivity, monitoring, protection, and delivery. And it's the area of delivery that we're looking at today. As you can see, we've got several different methods for getting things delivered to your customers. So a CDN is a content delivery network. This is much like the YouTube service. Traffic Manager is a global DNS load balancer. Application Gateway is a layer seven load balancer that also acts as a web application firewall. And finally, we have the Azure Load Balancer. This is a layer four resource that lets you scale your application and create highly available services from the back end. And that could be things like a clustered database, for example. Now each one of these resources does have their place and probably could use their own video. So if you're interested in one of those, give me some comments below and I'll be happy to put that together. Where Front Door fits in is kind of a little bit of all of that. So then the question comes up, which tool do I need to do my particular job? If you are using a regional point of presence, so you're in the Azure East region or UK South region. And in that region, you need something that is non-HTTP or non-HTTPS traffic. What you want is an Azure load balancer. But if you instead want something that has a global point of presence, but is not necessarily HTTP type traffic, you can use Azure's traffic manager. Now, if you need something regionally that is going to provide that layer seven traffic, which is HTTP or HTTPS, then you're looking at the application gateway. And finally, if you need something with a global point of presence that runs at layer seven, now you're looking at Azure Front Door. But let's just think for a moment about how you get to where you wanna go. Every application or website that you wanna get to, doesn't matter if it's on-prem or in the cloud, it's really physically somewhere. And you get to that somewhere by traveling on this thing that we call the internet. You open your web browser and you type in an address. As soon as you hit enter, what happens is your browser takes that address and does a DNS lookup. It resolves that name into an IP address. Then it goes and retrieves what you've asked for, and then it presents it to you in your browser or your application. So here we have a web front end of my application and that's running here in the US. And if somebody else wants to access it, there's only one place for them to go. They've got to traverse the internet to get from wherever they are to where my thing is over here in the US. The problem is that there's no way to directly control traffic flow over the internet. Even so, your most optimal path may still take you halfway around the world. So how can we do this more efficiently? Well, we could find a way to increase the speed of light or maybe discover a wormhole. In fact, that may be just what we need. Front Door is an entry point into the Microsoft Azure Global Network. Now you're riding the Microsoft Backbone, where we have a lot of control over routing and will optimize that flow from the pop nearest to you back to the application, giving the user a much more optimal experience. And the scale limits of Front Door are incredibly high. In fact, all of Microsoft's global services have been using it for years. Additionally, Front Door is a global service, which means it's not in one single region. So if there are any regional failures that happen, the service will automatically redirect traffic to the next closest pop. So that means resiliency is baked right into the cake. So that's at the entry point of the Front Door service. In the back end pool, if there's some kind of issue, we do have health probes that will detect those things so we can fail over just as quickly. Let's take a look at the Azure Docs. And from the main page of our docs, we'll scroll down and in our table of contents, we'll go to networking. And then right here in the middle of the screen, we have Azure Front Door. And then we'll click this link in the overview for what is Azure Front Door. 
And here's where you can read all about the service and understand all the different features and characteristics, just so you know where that is. Additionally, over here in the samples, we have a bunch of Azure Resource Manager templates, and then you can select which one of these may be right in your environment and deploy that, so you can see a quick way to get that up and running. So with that, let's go over to the Azure portal and get to work. So I've got two sets of virtual machines here. One is in East US, the other in UK South. They are both running a web server. And as you can see here at the bottom of the screen, this is the one that is in US East. We also have our one in the UK South. And so I've put the text at the bottom of the default web page just so we can see where each of them is. So now we want to take both of these systems that are in East US and in UK South, and we want to have them run as a single global application. So we're going to use our front door. So let's click the add here to build a front door. And then we'll click on that in our search and click create. So I've already got a resource group for this where my web servers were. So we'll use that as well as the East US region here. So we'll hit next. So the setup here is really quite simple. We'll go to add a new front end and we have to give our front door a name. So I'll call it my global app. And now we need to set our session affinity or web application firewall. Now the web application firewall is certainly a recommended thing to use because having a WAF is more secure than not having a WAF. The default position that I would suggest is that you enable this. However, at this moment, we actually can't enable this because we need a policy to go along with it. So we'll come back to this in a moment, but we will turn on session affinity. This is where we're going to make a initial connection and then all the subsequent traffic will go back to that same back end and we'll click add and that's it. We've added a front end. So let's add a back end now. So I'll call it my global app back end one and now we need to add a back end. So we'll click our plus here and then we'll click the drop down for the back end host type. And you can see that there are many different items that we could add here. Now in our case, since we're using virtual machines, I'm going to select a public IP since I've got that. And then that also gives us the ability here to select the particular public IP addresses that we already have. So I've got that selected. And of course we could tweak these items further if we want to, and this will be enabled. That way this particular back end will be running. So we'll click add and then we'll go and add our second one. So we'll choose a public IP again. And this time we'll choose our UK public IP and click add. Now we have also our health probes, and this is just like any other load balancer, web app gateway, where you want to be able to detect that your backend resources, these VMs, are actually healthy. And if they're not healthy, we're going to mark them as unhealthy and stop sending traffic to them. So the slash here indicates that this is the root, so the default web page in this case. I am not currently using HTTPS, so I'll set this for HTTP. And you've got two different probe methods here, head and get. And if you use head here, then you're not gonna need anything in the response body, which is a little simpler, so I'll leave that. And then it'll check in 30 second increments. That's the default. And then we come down to the load balancing and this is where we check the sample size. So it's gonna do four health checks. Two of them must be successful in order to call the backend healthy. And then the latency here, zero means check it as fast as possible. So if you need to add in some extra latency because of your connections, then you can add that right here. So we'll click add and now we have our backend. Now we need our routing rules. So we'll click the plus for that. So I'll call it my global app routing one. And then for the protocols, so since my backend only supports HTTP, I'll select that. And then you also have the option of selecting any one of the front ends that you have, because I've only got one of them. And now we have to look at the patterns to match for our routing rules. So we'll get a bunch of stuff coming in from the front end. What is it that we want to route against? The default is the slash because that's the default page. So it's saying slash star, which is the default and anything else. So basically all traffic is going to be routed through this rule. Once something matches our rule set, which in this case is everything, how do we want the system to deal with it? Should we forward the traffic to our backend like we have here as default, or should we set this to be redirected to somewhere? And then of course you can set your particular redirect type and all of the details, but I'll just leave this on forward. My backend pool is already selected and I'll choose HTTP only. And our last two options here are URL, rewrite, and caching. 
Now the URL rewrite has to do with taking the incoming request and then writing a custom forwarder to send it to the back end. For example, I'm using the default path so I could rewrite that to say, instead of slash, make this slash foo and then send that to the back end instead of just slash. Okay, in my case, I don't need that because I don't have anything else there anyway. And then we have caching. Now front door does not put a cap on any files that you're going to be serving up. So what they're going to use is a technique that's called chunking. And chunking is where we take all of these files that we're dealing with and we break them into eight megabyte chunks and then we'll serve those up. So when the chunk comes into the front door environment, it's cached and then served up to the user if you enable caching. Now, if you do enable caching, you also get the option of changing your query behaviors. Now, the default mode for queries here is to ignore query strings. And in either case, we're not going to modify your query. So no matter which one you choose, your query will still be passed. But in the cache every unique URL, every one of those queries will be treated like its own asset with its own cache. And then you can also choose to enable or disable dynamic file compression. And the particular list of files that we will compress is not something that you can modify at this point. So if you need to know more about those file types, you can go to the tooltip here on caching and click more and then go to file compression. And there is the list of files that we currently support. So I'm not going to enable caching. Again, I have a very simple site here and we'll just hit add and we have finished our configuration. So we'll now hit next and I'll add some tags. So my application is my global app. This is my lab environment and I'll put in a cost center so we know who's paying for these resources and we'll click next. And then we can review our details here and you can also save the arm template if you like so that you can reuse this and then hit create. Now that our front door is finished building, you can see we've got resources in the East US, in UK South, and then global for our front door. So we'll click on our front door and check it out. So at the top, we've got the basic Azure information along with the front door's front end host address. We've got the big buttons in the center for the front door designer and web application firewall. And they're also on the left in the settings section. And then at the bottom, we have metrics here and we can show that from one hour to 30 days. Okay. And then we'll see our request counts, size, backend request counts, and current health status. And you can dig more into the metrics over in the monitoring section. Just select the particular metric that you're interested in. And of course, you can always zoom in just like you can in any of the Azure metrics. And you can combine this with Azure's log analytics, event hub, or storage account by setting up diagnostic settings, which I have already done. And I'm sending that data to one of my log analytic workspaces. And you can check that data out in your logs. And so I'll just go to search through the logs here and pull the last 500 results. And there we go. And then of course you can dig into each one of these around your application and you can even create charts and graphs as well as set up alerts and thresholds from here, forward them off through a webhook to something like ServiceNow or some other ticketing system or take them out of Azure using the Azure Event Hub and send them to another monitoring tool. So if we go to the front door designer, this basically is the same thing that we went through during the build where we can create, delete, or modify any of the systems in our front door. And then at the very top, we also have a settings button. And this is where you can make sure that your backend cert subject name matches in the front door, as well as your timeout setting. So I'll hit cancel because I don't have those at the moment. And the one other button here is the purge button. And this is if you're using caching, where you can flush all of the data out of cache. Now, before we get into the web application firewall component here, I do want to show you that the front door is working. So you remember this was our web page initially. We had our UK South and our Azure East. Now, if I open a new page, because I'm located in the East US, this is now my front door pointing at the East US. I've got another browser here and this one has a VPN. So it looks like I'm sitting in Europe. So when I go to front door this time, now I'm talking to the pop in UK South. Okay, so our front door is working and it is geolocating. And the last thing we'll do today is go into the web application firewall. Now, you remember I said originally we could not initiate this because we didn't have a WAF policy and we still need to create one before we can apply it. So at our search at the top, we'll type in WAF and then we'll select the web application firewall policy and we'll click to create one. 
So in the create experience, we first have to select what our policy is for, and we can choose either a front door or a web app gateway or an Azure CDN. So we'll choose front door, and then we have to select our subscription and resource group where our front door is located. And then we need to give our policy a name, and I'll just call it my global app and my policy state will be enabled and we'll hit next. Now we have two modes that we can set up our WAF policy in, and that is detection or prevention. So detection is going to be the reporting without actually preventing anything, of course, whereas prevention is going to have some teeth behind it and stop things when we don't want them. So the nice thing about this is it allows you to first detect your normal behaviors, and then once you've found your baseline, then you can set it to prevention mode, which would then block anything that is non-standard. Then you can add a redirect URL here if you would like, as well as state your code and you could put in a response body so that people know what has happened. And we'll just hit manage rules for right now. And then what you can do is enable some or all of the rule set. And if we hit expand all, there is quite a lot here. And this follows the OWASP categories and OWASP stands for the Open Web Application Security Project. They categorize types of attacks and have recommended ways to prevent against them. And if you're interested more in that, you can click on our documentation link. So I'll hit next. And then you can also add some custom rules if you would like. So I'll add a rule here for the UK and I'll give it a priority level of one, which is the highest level rule that there is. And I'll geolocation map this. I've selected four countries in Europe because I'm not exactly sure where my VPN is going to route me through and we'll deny all of that traffic and click add. Not only am I instituting the OWASP rule set, but I'm also now saying, if you happen to be in the UK, I'm going to block you from being able to access my site. And then we'll click next and associate this to a front end. And we have our front door selected here, and then we can select whichever front end we want this rule to apply to. And then we'll click next to add our tags. And we'll just use the same tags as before and review and create. And then of course we can download this template and reuse it, so we'll hit create. Back in our global app resource group, we have a new resource here, and this is a global resource of our WAF policy. And inside the policy here, it's basically just what we looked at in the creation experience. We can set our policy setting to be detection or prevention. And just to save time, I flipped it over to prevention so you can see that experience. You can also edit your rule set here as well as your custom rule set, and then we can see which front end we are associated with. So back in our browser, we've of course got our original VMs and they are still up and running, as well as our front door hitting the East US, no problem there. And here's that other browser that's currently going to UK South because my VPN has me located in Europe. But if I flip over to being in Asia and we refresh, we can see our request is blocked by the web application firewall. And back in our logs, we can see that we've got some writes going on here as well as a web application firewall log write. And if we open that log, we can see that this was for our global app, as well as the IP address that we were coming from and that our action was to block because our mode is prevention and there was a rule set that matched so that they don't come onto my back end and cause me to do more computing on my side of things. So I hope that you've enjoyed this first look at the Azure front door. And this is a great tool to scale the front end of your applications. Just keep in mind that when you do, you may also need to scale up your back end services to meet all that new traffic. And there's certainly more that we can get into in more complex scenarios. So if you're interested in seeing some of that, give me some comments down below. So if you thought that this video was good, please do give us a thumbs up so that we know that you enjoyed it. And while you're down there, go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. Join us here at the Azure Academy where we're all just trying to learn about Azure and be a part of our discussion in the comments below. Either give us some feedback on this video, questions, or you can make uh, some comments, things you'd like to see us improve or suggestions for future videos. We're always looking to make what the community is interested in. And this video was from a request of several of our viewers. And if you'd like to receive an email when our newest video comes out, which is about once a week, you can click on that notification bell as well. Thanks very much for joining us today and we will see you in the next video. Happy learning.